Hello everybody and welcome to this video. It's another in the Student Exemplar series. You send in your work and then we make a video on it and we look at the brilliant bits and the bits that could be better. We all learn from it and the world is a better place. Now, if you send in your work, you can email it to info at mrbroff.com and you can remain anonymous if you want to or I can tell everybody who you are. The person who sent in this piece of work, they didn't actually make it clear. So if I hear back from them, I'll put their name in the description if they're happy for you to know who wrote it. It's a poetry comparison on the AQA exam board comparing the ways poets present ideas about conflict in Bayonet Charge and one other poem. So I'm going to go through this answer. Now let me just say, I've already recorded this video once, and then when I looked back at the video, for some reason the audio didn't record, so it's so frustrating, and um, I am recording it again now, but I'll probably be able to go through it quicker because I've got a case of uh, Groundhog Day, I've already done this. Hughes's bayonet charge and Garland's kamikaze are inextricably connected through various themes that echo and contrast each other, with many of their primary threads linking to concerns of conflict. The salient themes of these two poems include the conflict between culture and the individual, internal and emotional conflict, and the effects of conflict itself, all of which are manifested throughout each poem. Okay, so I like this as an introduction. I think it's really useful. And one of the things I like about it is that it says, look, both of these poems are actually the same in all of these ways. And, you know, I think that's a really good point to make, that a comparison doesn't have to be, you know, here are some similarities and here are some differences. It could be all similarities, as we see here, and um, a nice strong line of argument suggested that this exam answer is going to explore. In respect of the conflict between culture and the individual, Bayonet Charge depicts patriotism as harsh and hegemonising, and Kamikaze similarly presents it as authoritative and coercive. By using the line in what cold clockwork of the stars and the nations, Hughes highlights the cruel nature of England as a war machine that forces soldiers to die for her. For example, the dissonant alliteration of the k fricative used in cold clockwork emphasizes the harsh nature of the stars and the nations, alluding to countries that force men to die for them during a conflict, almost as if they are automated. The metaphorical cold clockwork augments the idea as it directly confronts nations as machines, with submissive and patriotic men as the cogs who essentially carry out the war and sacrifice themselves. As far as Hughes was concerned, the First World War had gravely affected him and his family, and his father was a war veteran and delineated it to him frighteningly, ergo this trauma overshadowed his childhood. Perhaps Hughes is presenting the war and the power of patriotism in such a critical manner through bayonet charge to highlight its detrimental consequences and the decimation that it causes. Okay, so there are two things I want to talk about in this paragraph, one positive and one thing to improve on. The first is the language analysis. I think it's really important to remember with a poem, just like with a play, that the lines are to be spoken aloud, and therefore thinking about the way they sound, for example, the fricative k sound, is so useful in, anal in an analysis of poems and of drama, and this student really nicely writes about that. The second thing I want to talk about is the analysis of Hughes and his father in the war. And this is always so interesting because biographical information, how can I, can I use biographical information as contextual detail? In my videos on the texts, I will talk about relevant biographical information. So, you know, I did talk about, for example, Hughes's father in the war, because I think it helps us to understand a text, to understand where the writer is coming from, or the poet in this case. But should you use that in an exam? There was a comment in the examiner's report for literature which said, you know, comments about um, a writer's own biographical situation, about their own life, are rarely helpful. And I just want to kind of extend or expand upon that um, in, in this little section of this video. See, rather than talk about Hughes's father, I think this would be quite easy to pull it onto a comment on how as a country as a whole, we are now critical of war. And this poem reflects on a war that has passed and has the hindsight of seeing the waste of life. So we would uh, resonate with that as a country. We view wars as perhaps necessary evils 
but ones that were exploitative of the young. So kind of widening the context rather than just sort of talking about the biographical information about the writer is a better way, is probably the way to write about these sorts of things. Because yes, I mean, what the students written here is true. You know, this this is an interesting poem because it's a World War I poem, but Hughes wasn't in World War I and you know, when you look into it, you realise his dad was and that had a big effect on him and the area he lived in. That's all true, but I think actually writing about that in the exam, writing about any biographical details about the writer is not useful. It's better to try and widen it to the more general context. And there are a few references to the biographical details of the poet in this answer, and I've addressed them now once, so I won't address them again. So it just needs a slight tweaking there, I think. Apropos of kamikaze, Garland presents culture as the ultimate power, with the quote as their bellies swivel towards the sun, serving as an implicit reminder. Bellies rolling over has connotations of being submissive, therefore demonstrating some level of compliance. However, the superior power is exhibited when she writes towards the sun. This alludes to Japan, also known as the land of the rising sun, consequently illustrating that Japanese culture is seen as supreme and maybe even pressurising. Furthermore, Garland's use of this metaphor to subtly reference coercive Japanese patriotism with the power of the Bushido Code could be a criticism to this method that prompts the reader to dwell on patriotism and war propaganda. The aforementioned Bushido Code was a code that kamikaze pilots adapted in Japan during the Second World War, and it stated that a true warrior must hold honour, loyalty, courage and veracity above all else. The code pressurised these pilots into embarking on suicide missions for honour and love for their country. When looking at kamikaze through this contextual lens, we can infer that perhaps it is a criticism of this blind patriotism. And therefore both poems explore the power of culture compared to the individual as if it is detrimental and causes decimation, and although they are both critical of this power, Bayonet Charge demonstrates this in a much less subtle manner than kamikaze. This could be reflective of Hughes's personal experience with warfare through narration by his father, compared to the fact that Garland never experienced war and conflict herself. So I would just take out that last sentence here, and you know I think the answer would be uh, better taking that out. Um, what I like about this paragraph really is the comparative element. We have to remember we are comparing two texts, and there's this really nice, sophisticated idea that you know. Um, both poems explore the power of culture compared to the individual and the detrimental causes of them and the detrimental effects, and they're both critical of that. So a nice kind of um, you know element of uh, comparison there. We're going to finish with this paragraph. There, this is a longer answer, but I think it's useful just to look at these first three paragraphs in particular. Internal and emotional conflict are also exhibited in both poems, but where Hughes explores the inner conflict concerning existentialism within the soldier, Garland investigates the emotional conflict within the pilot, between his love for his country and his life itself. In Bayonet Charge, was he the hand pointing that second, augments the cumulative idea of the war machine, but the question mark indicates that he's questioning the rationale for taking part in the war. This illustrates the internal conflict within him. This theme of emotional conflict is further exacerbated by the recurrent use of enjambment, which Hughes uses to reflect the experience of the soldier due to the lines running into each other as if they are a single stream of consciousness. As a whole, this structural free verse form is mimetic of the soldier's thoughts, which are sometimes long and arduous but are also existential in questioning. This could be a reflection of Hughes's own fears and questions of war, because when he was younger his father described the war to him in a manner that he found very frightening from his experience. Ergo, his perspective of the war was that it was horrific, and he saw no reason for the violence. This could potentially be manifested in bayonet charge through the soldier's existential mindset. Last bit I want to look at, then I'll talk about this. Comparatively, Garland presents emotional conflict within the mind of the pilot through the use of ambiguous imagery, with arcing in swathes like a huge flag as an example. Although this is a simile for the fish that he saw, arcing could be mirroring the doubt in his mind regarding whether he should execute the mission for honour or protect his life and turn away. In addition, the turbulent inrush could also be a metaphor for his divergent thoughts, with turbulent alluding to his vacillating thoughts and inrush hinting at the sudden rush of doubt. Furthermore, this concept of conflict within the pilot's mind is increased by the lack of punctuation in the first three stanzas, where the narrator is recounting his father's, her father's story, as this doesn't allow the reader to pause and comprehend. 
Perhaps it's a symbol of the panic that is flooding his mind. Moreover, this could be a sign of the immense social pressure on kamikaze pilots from both their country and their family, which forces them to feel as if they must die honourably to be revered. For that reason, both Hughes and Garland investigate internal and emotional conflict throughout their poems, but Hughes illustrates this through structural techniques, whereas Garland focuses on this idea through imagery, despite structure supplementing the concept. Okay, so long comparative two paragraphs here, but what I like about these paragraphs, they have some really sophisticated ideas, okay, so some structure ideas on enjambment and lack of punctuation, um, the idea of the imagery of the uh, war machine, the hand that pointed, the punctuation of the question mark, all of those sorts of things. And But what I think is so important to talk about with poetry in particular, I don't know why it's with poetry, but I always see it with poetry answers, is that this exam is not about show me everything clever that you know. This exam is about answer the question. The question is on conflict. And this student really brilliantly makes a lot of sophisticated points but doesn't lose the fact that this is about conflict. So links them to the wording of the question. Now a really nice answer, so some, some great strengths, really good analysis of language and the sounds words make, of structure, linking things to the question, not just writing everything I know about the poem, uh, being able to make comparative points throughout and very sophisticated comparative points. The only weakness I would say is that the biographical detail could be um, developed to be that wider context about society and that will be um, something that I would give as a target for this piece of work. If you found this video useful, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.